of the playoffs. TD Garden game two. Boston looking to go up 2 0 after they put their foot up the heats behind in game one without Hemi Butler. Still without Hemi Butler. And come to find out there was no Terry Rozier for game two. Uh, and Boston was a 14 and a half point favorite. I laughed when I saw that. I was like, bro, we're in the playoffs and you telling me a, a team can be a 14 point and a half favorite in the playoff game? Good gracious. There was no faith in the Miami Heat. Well, the Miami Heat has something to say about that. 111 to 101 victory over the Boston Celtics. And uh, Miami flipped the script on Boston. All five started for the Heat in double figures. Led away by Tyler Hero with 24 points, 14, 14 assists, and five boards. Bam out of Bayou and Caleb Martin both with 21 points. Bam also gave you 10 rebounds. And then all of a sudden on the Celtics side, well, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, they combined for, you know, 61 points, and but uh, 13 from Dorette Wright, 9 from Drew Holiday, and 6 from Chris Stafford Zingas. Those are not good numbers to look at. But the main thing is when I say they flipped the script, the heat. They got they, hot. The heat was scorching hot from three. Dare I say white hot? Man, that, ladies and gentlemen, that is a plus 33 for Miami in the three ball department over the Boston Celtics. And they wasn't jacking up threes either. Those threes was in the rhythm of the offense. This is true. When have you seen a team that can take 40 plus threes and you look at them like, most of these damn threes are in the rhythm of the offense. These, these ain't rush. These ain't heat checks. This is within the offense that they are running. 23 out of 43. 53.5% from three. Like, I know Jaden Brown, Tayson Simmons is looking at them like, why? Like, why every single time we got to face this team, we get problems? <laughs> they don't have Jimmy Butler. They don't have Terry Rozier. And yet it is 1-1. One, one. Heading to South Beach. So, Kuma McCain. The floor is yours, sir. Well, you know, Shaq had the script for this game beforehand because he was the only one yelling that he was going to win by 10. So um, when Shaq started talking, I'm going to start making some bets now because Shaq got the script. He know what's up. But uh, all jokes aside, um, they said before the game that Tyler Hero said that uh, Jimmy hit him up and told him, basically, you got to be the hero. Tyler, you got to be the hero, all puns intended. And um, not just scoring, but also setting people up, being a focal point. Tyler Hero really bought into that for game two. Um, and I will say this, even with how amazing Miami played, 10-point win, that's still not a lot with how well they played, like for the three and everything. So it's still concerning if you're trying to win the series if you're Miami. What If you're Miami, what you're hoping for is we can get Jimmy Butler back sometime soon. And maybe make a series out of this. That's probably not going to happen, but that's the best bet or the best hope if you're Miami. We are going home. Uh, role players play better at home, right? This is what I always say throughout the playoffs. So maybe they got a chance to get one, maybe both of these games at home because they did split on the road. So you protect home court the rest of the series and you win the series. So Boston, this is the third time. This is the third time y'all have played Miami, and Miami has been scorching hot from three on y'all. They like that. I thought y'all was the team who wants to shoot the three ball. Did, did, did I miss you how Boston wants to run the offense? I thought Boston was the team that wanted to shoot threes. You didn't misconstrue it, but I think 
there's times where it's like, yeah, this team want to shoot it too. This team want to do whatever. But sometimes you just get a, a, a team that's just ready. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's a team that's just ready. They won't play in no games, zero games. Miami came out to make it happen. Boston wasn't necessarily not involved, but they weren't as adamant about getting points. I think they kind of felt like most of the game will have a chance to come back. We'll get back in this game. We'll have a chance, right? But what they didn't realize was Miami ain't one trying to get them that chance. Now, there's been some – how can I put this? There's been some uh, problems about the fact that people, that some people admire what Eric Spoelstra has done with the Miami Heat since the big three – dissipated and uh there are some people out there who don't like it because he's never won a championship since the big three left if those of you who pay attention to basketball like y'all say y'all do name me a superstar outside of jimmy butler that this man has coached outside of the big three and credibly, some people don't even believe Jimmy Butler's a superstar. Am I correct? You are correct. And if I recall, Miami don't really draft guys. They actually get the undrafted guys, right? Mm-hmm. And this is what is called heat culture. And yet, every year, who, who always find a way to be in the Final Four no matter what seed they got? I'm going to go with Miami for 500, sir. So, I know Eric Spoelstra hasn't won, but how many coaches in the NBA right now are you taking over Eric Spoelstra? Man, I'm even going to go to the fact of, take, of who I'm taking over Eric Spoelstra. I'm going to put it to you like this. Who has consistently been in the playoffs, having opportunities to win, upsetting teams that most people believe are much better than them on a consistent basis? Who else? Name somebody. Right? Like, you got teams like L.A., two what people would consider um, at least superstars, one ring in the bubble. That's all they've had. They haven't been consistent, and they ain't going to get out of the first round this year. You know, Boston Celtics. They've been to the, they've been to the uh, championship. They haven't won anything. With Jalen Brown and um, Jason Tatum, and both of them men been in the league what at least five years, I believe four or five years. So we're not talking about no young rookies no more, right? We can go there and Bill Walkie. They won their they won the championship, and next year they fired the coach. After the next, you know, two seasons later, by the time of the second season, they fired the coach after they won the championship. So there's no teams, and these are teams that have star players, multiple star players. There's no team that's been consistently upsetting people doing well. Even my Denver Nuggets, when they didn't have Jamal Murray when he was injured and Michael Porter Jr. was out, they were making the playoffs, but they were making like 6, 7 C and getting put out pretty quickly. And you talk about getting guys. Here's the, here's, here's the biggest to what impresses me with Air Spolstrom. They get these undrafted guys. They have one year with them. And they go get paid somewhere else, and they still can do the same thing year in upon year in upon year in. Right. So, miss me with the whole Eric Spolster ain't won a championship talk. Eric Spolster shouldn't even be in a position to be talked about as winning, possibly winning championships, but he's somehow still there. That's the biggest compliment I could pay the man. I, I don't, I don't know if I can say it any better than how Coop just said it because, uh, what more do what more do you want from the man? Go get him Dame Lillard, and maybe you get better. Your okay. defense is going to take a dip, but maybe you get better overall. And no, Eric was he probably find a way to keep the defense the same. If anybody would, I would say it would be him. That man, that man saw his team get destroyed in game one. Came back, made adjustments in game two, and he flipped the script on Boston. 
They did. Who has been the best team in the NBA record wise in my in my line? If you were lying, you flying, and I don't see any wings, sir. So this 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 hatred towards Eric Spoelstra, I don't understand. That man takes a team. When you look at their roster, you look at their roster, you be like, huh, okay. Yeah, I'll probably make the playoffs because you got you you got Henry Butler, but yeah, I ain't going far. And before you know, if we get to the East Finals, then, then who's in the East Finals? The Heat team. And we scratching our head. What the hell, Philly? What 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 Philly? What happened to Philly? Awesome. What are y'all doing? Nevertheless, the Heat still there. Matter of fact, who was the AC that made the NBA Finals last year? That would have been the Miami Heat, as far as I can remember. And if I remember correctly, one day was like three minutes away from being eliminated completely by the Chicago Bulls in the play-in tournament. That's what I recall, sir. They 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 took out Giannis and the Bucks and five, even though we know Giannis was injured for the start of that series. Took out a Nick. Took out the New York Knicks. And then everybody was like, yep, this is Boston season to go get it. Uh, who knocked out Boston? By the way, in game seven, in TD Garden, by the way. In dominant fashion, too. When Boston had multiple chances to close out and couldn't get the job done on top of that. But yeah, we wanna we wanna we wanna look at Aaron Spurs because he ain't winning rings since LeBron D. Wade and Chris Bosch left. If I recall, he's the most consistent guy that can get there. Good gracious. Cause we keep looking at Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, you want to be the face of the league, but you gotta you gotta give me a ring or something. And every time he get close, he run into the Miami Heat, and the Miami Heat gives him problems. They know how to guard him. Like, hey, Giannis, y'all, y'all, you looking, you y'all team, you team look, you looking like 2019 team, Giannis. Y'all looking good. Giannis goes down. Miami's like, oh, oh well, got to take you out. Stephen A. Smith Knicks. Oh, that's a gritty team. They want it. And Jim Butler's like, and and y'all and y'all did the fatal move of talking trash to me Butler in game two when he couldn't play. And I was like, up oh, New York. And I sit here and say, up oh, New York long lost this series already. That's the wrong guy to talk trash to, especially he ain't on the court. The boys came out and bust New York. Yes, they did. They ran to Denver and like uh they went, we all knew they weren't beating Denver. That that machine that's over there that Mike Malone built, it was like they gave us two games though. But I mean, they won Denver. It just wasn't gonna happen. I mean, no shade, they played hard, even a lot of the games they lost. It was it was hard fought victories for Denver. But this, y'all need get Eric Spoelstra his flowers, please. This man is taking players who are not considered top fifteen players, and they always in the final four of the NBA. And this is why I'm gonna give Cole Johnson his moment because he missed his moment when I already I already recapped it Wednesday's game. So go ahead, sir. <sighs> Where should I begin? You're supposed to be the best team in the NBA. You had over 60 wins. No team within your conference had 50 except for the Knicks. And they got that on the last day of the season. And you had three teams in the in the West battling for the number one seed, but they weren't even close to you guys. But should I be surprised? No. I mean, there's been there's been signs of this. I mean, just take we were just talking about the Cavs. Take for instance, them when they went to visit Northeastern Ohio. I believe this was back in February, where you had a twenty point lead in the fourth quarter and lost. And you had these moments where you would have these spectacular games where you would just sprint out to these large double digit leads. And then you walk with your head hang low as if, as if a bully stole your lunch money. 
And then we get to Wednesday night. You had a wonderful performance Sunday. You 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 showed you showed a hemily less heat that they don't belong on the court. You did great. That's how you're supposed to do it. And then you allow the hemi background singers destroy you on your home floor. Poor coaching. I I, I don't understand it. And I, I I I agree with you, cool. I think Joe Mazzula, uh maybe you aren't co- and then they had and people had the nerve to say, Well, why is Joe Mazzula mentioned for coach of the year? Game two, first round of the NBA playoffs this year, there's your answer. You do not lose to me. You do not lose to the Heat by 10 at home with Jimmy Butler. You lost by 10 at home to them without him. And terrible, dear. <sighs> See, I, you're, you're better than the Heat. And I know you have revenge in your minds because they were the team that bounced you on the East Coast Finals last year. So I know, and, and you all have a, I won't say a rivalry. It seems like you all have some competitiveness to you all because you seem to want to make, meet, meet them in the playoffs every year. And you just bounce each other out of the playoffs seemingly and you take turns doing so. You have the better squad, talent-wise. But the Heat proved to me they have it more up here than you guys and it shouldn't be this way because i'm looking at you jalen brown i'm looking at you jason tatum and yeah i'm looking at you chris hasperzingas you three you three should be the ones to carry the rest of the team and say you know what all we have to do is do 25 each you can you could chip in with 25 to fi- 25 to 40 and we will win a- against every single team in the NBA. You cannot excuse that effort. I'm like you got to be kidding me. They went to the play they went to the finals 2 years ago. And they were 2 games away from hoisting their 18th Larry O'Brien trophy in the first in this little bunch that that has congregated together in the Jason Tatum era. But uh, Emi Adoka decided to give give the team a whole lot of hoes, and then you lost your focus, and then you lost three straight to the Warriors. Then we get to last year, where it took three butt whoopings in a row for you all to wake up in the Easter Conference Finals and say, oh, we ain't eliminated yet. <laughs> well, we got to start playing. And you played the three most inspired games of your year only to <laughs> on your own home floor in game seven because you had no juice left because it took all of your energy to just erase that three nothing deficit just to get it to a game seven in your own building. And of course, it made my mentality brother wise happy because an infirm Dave Portnoy was sick to his stomach literally and figuratively in seeing his Celtics lose and get bounced from the playoffs. Uh, for those who don't know, Dave Portnoy, founder of Barstool, and seemingly a, a troll when it comes to pizzas, but I digress. You're the best team in the NBA, but you're not playing like it. I'm, I'm sorry. There, there's just no excuse for you to lose to the Heat, even with Jimmy Butler as the star player on the Heat. And you did it without him. You 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 lost without him on the floor. <laughs> so is it that Spo is so much better of a coach than Missoula? It looks that way. And it's unfortunate, but Dims is the breaks. But you now know supposedly the worst team in your conference can beat you by double ditches at home. And the competition gets stiffer from here. Should you win, and I you should win in the first round, you get to meet either the uh, the Cavs or the Pacers. Both teams are pretty good defensively. Magic, not Pacers. You get to meet. You get to face either the Magic or the Cavs. Both teams are good defensively. 
Believe in your magic, playmaker. Anyway, now, should you actually pass a test against either one of those teams, more than likely you'll have to face the Knicks. Maybe the Sixers. Maybe. Maybe the Bucks. I don't think so, but hey, you never know. Stranger things have happened. But the competition gets stiffer each round. And you all did not have focus. And this is your own building. And I actually heard a stat. The team that has the number one seed in the Eastern Conference in the last collection of games at home in the playoffs, they are 13 up and 13 down. You don't deserve to be the Eastern Conference champions. I could care less if you are. I could care less if you're not. But with that effort Wednesday night, mm -mm. I'll even I'll even take the Lakers seven in the fourth quarter of that game later on that night over your 48 minute performance in Boston. How dare you? Shh.